We are now five weeks out from our very first climate expedition. We are super excited, but also a little bit nervous because we know that we need to step it up a notch. Following on from the conversations that we had with Leighton in episode one, where he said that the good way for us to train or prepare for walking in the snow would be to train in the sand dunes. Yeah, just walking on the beach and going up sand dunes in the backpack. We've done a mountain. We've done a 25 kilometer trail run. We've been doing cold exposure therapy with ice baths. One of the last things left to do is to train on terrain like snow. And the perfect place to do that is on a sand dune. So we were thinking, where could we possibly do that? And I thought the very perfect location for us would be the Carlo Sandblo up in Rainbow Beach. Because we know we needed to step it up a notch, we got our really good friend Jess Ryder, um, uh, who's a PT, to come in and help us train in the sand dunes, but also stretch and understand some of the things that we might need to do in order to prevent injuries while we're out on, in the snow. Righto, 8.30 a.m. in the morning. We are at the factory in the ute, just about head up to Rainbow Beach. We have roped Jess Ryder in to train us hard. She's sitting in the back. Train us hard up in Rainbow Beach. I mean, you know you've gone over the top when you start bringing in PT <laughs> to train you. Personal training in an exotic location. <laughs> All right, you know you've gone over the top, but we're really, really pumped to go today. And we're gonna, this is, um, this is, oh, you've got something planned for us, which is yes. pretty, pretty cool uh, in the sand dunes. <laughs> So Jess has been in the health and wellness space for over a decade, owning her own gyms and really working on the strength and mobility for all of her clients. So I've been working personally with her for about two years uh, and have seen dramatic improvements in uh, mobility and my strength overall. So to have her come and train us in such a exotic location as the as the Carlo Sambo was uh, was a was a great experience. All right, we've arrived at Kalula Cove in the at the sand blow up here and it's it never disappoints it's absolutely one of my favorite places and to be here to train with jess today is uh is going to be pretty magic i know i'm going to probably be hurting <laughs> by the end of it but uh what are we looking for jess what are we what are you going to push us through well today we're just going to do some work um first off with your feet and ankles so start at the foundations mm. work with them make sure that we're building nice and strong foundations especially when we're walking through the bush for days on end um and then we're going to work on our recovery so nasal breathing drills up and down the dunes um and making sure that we're keeping our heart rate or we're able to get our heart rate back under control so we're doing those steep inclines while we're out in the bush and out on our tracks we're able to pull ourselves back to where we need to to keep going how did you know that i was going to gas out <laughs> and be panting at the top of a hill <laughs> how did you know to add that into the protocol today just a wild guess. oh my yeah. god this, wasn't an educated guess. that's what happens when you work together for uh, for long enough and you start to understand uh how everybody is sort of deals with things but uh all right pretty pumped about today yeah so we're gonna work through that and then we're gonna go through some other mobility drills that they can do on the track to keep them limber and moving and feeling fresh every day all right so this is just basically just pumping blood and fluid into the knee joint priming it for work okay um it's getting blood flow into the muscles and warming them up essentially that's what we want to do is we want to warm the muscles so they're pliable and useful yeah. and it also helps prime the feet and ankles like if you think of what you're doing there with your feet trying yeah. to balance on them yeah so these would be real good after carrying the pack all day. 
you know what I mean? Like doing yeah. it at the end of the day, just stretching the spine out, letting it hang, like, you know, hanging at the bottom. Like, is that, is that, or is that the benefits of us working with no shoes on today? Yeah, no shoes, like, you know, learning the anatomy of your feet, strengthening them. Yeah. Yeah. That way, if the shoe isn't doing the greatest job, and then you've got the backup of your own body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's really strengthen up those feet and ankles and stuff to be able to deal with obviously the fact that we're going 10, between 10 and 20 k a day. Well, that's the goal anyway. Now that we get here, it's come time for the grueling drills that she has set up for us. And man, oh man, I am not feeling it. My first thoughts about this drill was like, oh, this will be pretty easy. We've been doing a fair bit of training. We definitely feel like our fitness has improved. And I've been up that sand dune before with my son, Logan. So I was like, yeah, this will be all right. But on that first walk up, just nasal breathing, I was surprised how puffed we were getting like by halfway. So it was definitely setting in that this is gonna be tough. Now don't laugh when we start to slow down on this sand dune. It is way steeper than it looks. Just focusing on nasal breathing, it is weird because it's not, I guess it's not something that you normally do, right, when you're exercising. Uh, so to get partway up the mountain, or up the mountain, up the sand dune, uh, and just be nasal breathing, it was uh, very difficult. By the time we got halfway up, I was struggling for, to, to breathe. Uh, and then when we got to the top, I was very, very gassed out. <laughs> My legs were absolutely killing me. And this was round one. Almost gasping for air. And I was surprised at how, how hard it was just to breathe through our nose, just walking up. So on the walk down, we were really trying to focus on getting control of our breath again. And because I knew what was coming on the next one, we had to sprint up this hill and uh, my legs were already burning. By the time we get back down to the bottom and just getting our breath back, it's back up to the top. And I, I knew this was gonna be super hard. This is why we got Jess involved. But uh, when we, <laughs> It's just, it was just go, 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 up and down in the sand dunes, um, which was very difficult. The walking up was okay, it was the running up. And I mean, you'll know that, you'll see when we get part way up with running, we start to really slow down. Uh, so, to, but going up and down, up and down, up and down, our legs were really, really proper gassed. And we slowed down immensely. I couldn't believe that it took us longer to try and sprint up than just walking up nasal breathing. Even though we won't be sprinting in the snow, we'll be trekking, we'll have loads on our back. Uh, and really it's about that mental fortitude, right? Being able to do that sort of terrain and continue going, getting those sorts of distances done uh, through the snow, it's it's really a mental fortitude. Just you would just have to keep going to be able to make those distances. We thought this sand dune was only about thirty degree pitch, but standing in front of it and going up it, we think it was more like a fifty degree incline. So it was much more steep than we anticipated, and which I guess is what we want anyway to feel our feet kind of sinking into the sand and feel that extra resistance that we might feel in the snow. It was pretty cool to see that just keeping that consistency with your breathing, you can actually get further and push yourself harder um, and quicker than you would if you were just sprinting and gasping for air. By going knees over toes, like if you think of when you're going down on a descent, the load is in the knee. Yeah. So this drill is really good because you don't need any weight. It's going to help open the hips, but it's also going to help strengthen that knee joint yeah. when it's in that loaded position, yeah. coming up out of the top. So the way you would regress that is you would do it on like a higher level. So maybe like two plates, yeah. two 20 kilo plates snapped out of the gym out of the back yeah. or on like a box or something like that. And then, yeah, you're just going to go into it and you're going to work to try and keep, try and get the hamstring touch the calf, keep the, and you can let, lift the ankle a little bit and then you're just going to press through the toes and stand back up again. Okay. Eventually you want to work your way down to the ground. Think like you're fighting like this all day, yeah. you'll be really tight in the chest, and that's going to start creating problems for your back. shoulder blades, your back, everything. 
So you want to keep the chest open and the back strong. Right. If that makes sense. So dislocates every day or whenever you get a chance to help open the chest up, keep some blood in the shoulder joints. Yeah. And then the other thing we want to work on is probably some push-ups. After we finished, we we decided we were gonna go down to the water's edge and stretch it out. Uh, I didn't actually think I was gonna make it down there. My legs were shaking. Jess made a passing comment that uh, I'd probably am <laughs> pretty underprepared when it comes to actually going on this expedition, <laughs> which <laughs> gauging by that we only just done, uh, only just done a handful of uh, drills up and down the sand dunes. So, I mean, yeah, cheers, Jess. Feel the stretch and hip flexor, yep. and in the top So, what will happen is if you get really tight in here, you feel it over your kneecap, especially like when you're going down the hills, and that's just the quad tendon getting really tight. That's what attaches the muscles. So as the muscles get tight, you tend to get tight, you feel the tightness over the kneecap. The other thing you can do is like some kneecap gliding, which is where you just like press it to the side, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it just yeah. helps like glide it over and prime it a little bit and get a little bit of fluid in our Interesting. There. Oh my God, look at that ocean. Today has turned out to be an absolute magic day. I uh, was saying before that this place it, it has it really holds a special place in my heart. I've been coming here since I was a kid and a day like this, and I guess to be here today with, with these guys to really go through a lot of the exercises and all the things that we need to do in order to prepare for this Australian Alps trek. How are we feeling? Oh, I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jess hasn't done anything. She's just uh, barking orders at us. Oh, yeah, but the quads are pretty sore, though. Yeah, I tell you what. To, to send you. Yeah, and look, the fact we 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 thought we'd come down right by the water side, um, overlooking the cliffs, to really stretch out and wind down uh, before we go and get some lunch. Yeah. Or there might be, maybe a <laughs> beer on the menu. There could be. I, I, I don't want to promise anything, but there could be. But yeah, thanks, awesome. Thanks, it was awesome, Jess, that you fact you came out with us today, yeah. trained us, put us through our paces. I am definitely going to feel it tomorrow yeah. when those dogs set in. Oh my god. <laughs> We've got all our gear now and we've been training for the last four months. We've seen pretty massive improvements with both Reese and I physically. Uh, so the next thing now is to do an overnight trek. We've decided to do the Mullaney Great Walk and this will be our next episode.